Inuit have certain associations for us, don't they? So, for example, if we were going to play a big game of Pictionary and you turned up the word evil, what would you draw? The truth is, a lot of us associate the word evil uh, either with a rather cartoonish version of evil, the you know, little mad creatures, usually red with horns uh, and pitchforks running around, uh, or we only ever associated with those things that we would categorise as obviously and deeply wrong and 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 uh, you know, dirty and twisted. But Jesus, in this amazing prayer he teaches us, tells everyone to pray, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. So clearly evil is something that runs far deeper than those obviously bad uh, or those sort of cartoonishly bad places that we often label as evil. What are the evils in our world that God wants to deliver people from? What is he right now through the power of prayer wanting to deliver us from? It was really great uh, last week to have the chance to chat to uh, a couple called Joe and Lois Ovenden. Uh, they're working uh, with the BMS and, and with other partners in Gulu, Uganda. Uh, and it was really interesting to chat with them about what it means in their lives and in their work to pray, deliver us from evil. I, I guess for a lot of people, um, you know, as they think about sort of mission and, and mission workers, um, it, it'd be great just to hear from you guys. How does a couple from from Sheffield uh, end up sort of uprooting, you know, their lives, their future plans, their careers, uh, and end up working out in in Uganda and and raising a family there? Uh, how how did that come about for you guys? That's a, that's a good question. Um, we wonder it sometimes. But uh, then we remind ourselves that it's something that God placed on our heart even before we got together. Even, In fact, it was part of the decision making in terms of whether we would um, kind of spend our lives together. That sense that we both had that God was calling us to, um, to work overseas um, and that sense of um, justice. Um, that he put on both of our hearts and um, to serve in parts of the world where, um, yeah, I suppose where he, we felt this sense of um, needing to be part of his, his love and his work. Um, and that's needed everywhere, not just overseas, but he specifically put that on our hearts. I think for mm -hmm. you, it was actually when you came to Uganda as a student, wasn't it, that he put that? Uh, yeah, so I had some kind of key experiences. I, I, yeah, it's kind of thing, I've always had an interest in the world and um, had opportunity to do a little bit of traveling here and there. And um, uh, part of my undergraduate studies, I um, uh, came to Uganda with a couple of friends and ended up kind of focusing some of my studies around stuff here. And yeah, just had some really uh, powerful experiences that, that God used, particularly, I suppose, exposure to like some of the injustices that people face here. One uh, particular young man who the organisation that we were connected to had been working with for a while um, got sick and died and I just couldn't, it was stuff that could have been, or well, certainly was preventable or could, could have received treatment, but just the healthcare infrastructure, infrastructure that he was able to access at the time just wasn't there. And um, yeah, those experiences um, really spoke to me powerfully and um, yeah, kind of got... That was the, those are some of the first instances for me to kind of God putting the um, putting on my heart the injustices and the kind of evils of those of the systems and the evils of of, of poverty and the kind of real mm. uh, um, impacts that those things have on on, on people's day to day lives mm. um, and kind of wanting to wanting to try and contribute something to doing something about that. And so what does that look like for you guys now in terms of the work that you're doing? So that sort of trying to bring something of, of, of the life of the kingdom and the justice of God. And what does that mean for you both? Uh, well, we work for an organisation called BMS World Mission, um, which is a UK based Baptist uh, mission organisation. Um, and the main thrust of our work here is through the network of Baptist churches. So we work very closely alongside. There are two Baptist associations that serve different parts of of, of Gulu and the kind of neighbouring districts um, and our main so my, my role within the team is overseeing our different development activities so um, the longest running one is uh, working with uh, rurally isolated communities 
um, training them in improved farm techniques and um, uh, distributing seeds, uh, trying to get them to treat their farming activities as, as business, an opportunity for household income and not just for um, uh, subsistence, not just for kind of living uh, and eating. Um, and other work activities, we have a cl close partnership with um, Christian Lawyers Organisation and um, we've been doing uh, child protection training in schools with them. Um, and a part of our work also is uh, Lotus Speed Therapy work. Yeah, disability in particular here is perceived in particularly in a spiritual way. Um, and um, there is the inequality, the, in, um, the injustice that is associated with disability is particularly marked. So, um, for me the work here isn't about just about being able to help people have a voice and to be able to communicate there's this kind of bigger spiritual element of like because some, just because someone has a disability they are still made in the image of god they are still have um the right to access health care and to access education and to be um seen as like fully fully human really and i think when we dehumanize people for whatever reason whether that is disability or any other reason whether it's through race or socioeconomic status when we treat people um, in a way that doesn't reflect how God sees somebody then we are we are complicit um, with with evil so we need to we need to stand against that, whether that is helping people out of poverty or um, standing up for children's rights in schools. Mm. Or mm. It's giving um, families a different perspective on disability. All of that for me is um, deliver it, helping God's kingdom to come and delivering from evil. Because I would see evil as like um, the absence of what God is and what god's heart is so if, if god's heart is love and justice compassion mercy when we don't see that that's when we are you know that that's if those things are things that are present then that's for me what i would i would see as evil um <clears throat> both personally and on, on a big level yeah, so yeah. when we stand against that in whatever way that is whether it's in our personal lives or in the work that we do um hopefully we're part of bringing about god's kingdom and and standing against asking god to help us to stand against evil mm -hmm. yeah in, in terms of the sort of the uh, rhythm of, of life for you guys um what, what does prayer look like for you in terms of you know you've got, you've got a young family you, you're both very <laughs> very busy um uh, many many challenges um, in the sort of culture and context that you're in now uh, what does prayer look like <laughs> uh yeah definitely has changed throughout different seasons um i happen to be in a in a phase of of feeling like prayer is something that's becoming a bigger thing this phase i have to say i have had basically no rhythm of like daily prayer intentional daily prayer since the children were born connie's just about to be, our oldest is about to be six so for about six years which is basically all the time that we've been in uganda i've had a really poor rhythm <laughs> um and i've just now the children all sleep through the night i'm just re-entering into a life sleep <laughs> and getting up um in that um so now it does, it has shifted a bit for me personally. Mm. Prayer probably for the last few years has been this case of like um, immediate needs prayer. Mm. Like where there's this kind of like, there's this situation and I need to pray for it right now. Mm. Um, and like arrow prayers, just like, okay, God help me right now. Or there's this situation, please break in. Um, and there's just been this recent season so please don't think that missionaries have got it. We don't. <laughs> um, this happens to be a very recent season of where I can sit and ask God to speak to me on a bit of a kind of a bigger 
level and contemplate and not just pray pray for immediate needs but mm -hmm. ask god to show me where where it is that he wants me to who it is that he wants me to pray for and what yeah. situations he wants me to pray into um whereas i think prayer life probably on the whole in the last few years has been a bit more like just asking him to help get us through mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about this phrase um deliver us from evil um it can it, it, it's such a big ask it's such a uh, sort of dramatic thing uh, but as you were talking earlier about um evil being the absence of god and god's purposes and god's desires for people and and situations uh, you can start to see evil more you know not just outside of us but inside of us as well uh, and so if if prayer is part of that sort of um spiritual battling through and that seeking of, of god's presence etc if, if somebody had, had, you know in this season it is experiencing that um sense of being apart from god or the or the lack of, of what god wants for them how would you just sort of suggest to them they could start in in prayer where, where would they begin i think in terms of yeah you're saying we can see evil as the outside, can't we? And like these big things like injustice and corruption and poverty. But there's, yeah, like, there's also this personal element. And I feel like there's this battle even within ourselves of, um, for, every, for every situation at the moment, it might be patience for homeschooling and worries over health or thing. And so for me, it's starting to pray about for somebody who's just starting out in prayer, what is it, what is it immediately that you see? And if you, then what is that, that need? And if you're seeing a situation and it's not looking like it's got all those hallmarks of God, the compassion and mercy and, and, and love, even in our personal lives, then to pray for those specific things and, and um, I found it helpful to pray for really quite um, specific things because that's when I feel like I can see that God is working. Mm. So it might be even that, like, um, again, using the example of the children or something, feeling completely exasperated and I've lost my temper and I've shouted and generally not behaved as one hope I would behave. Um, I can ask, like, Lord, um, like help me to be um, patient and and kind and seeing that like I've got a choice with each thing I've got a choice if I imagine that it's a battleground and the enemy wants me to have less love and compassion and mercy and patience and God's is calling us into those things it's like God help me to move towards those things mm. and sometimes i'm not going to move towards them but i need to just stand firm and not become sure mm. Mm. of those mm. other things mm. um i think it's in romans twelve twenty one where it says um don't be um do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good mm. Mm. and so whether it's in your relationship asking god when one of you's annoyed the other one instead of getting back, just praying for the ability to love better the other one or in your community, if there's someone that you're struggling with, asking God to help you to be someone that um, overcomes that situation in, with, with good. Mm, um, mm. And not that we can just strive to do it, but to asking God to help us in that because we all have this capacity to go towards stuff that isn't godly yeah or yeah. Is, is god his character yeah so praying for that in our personal lives for god to deliver us is to just help us to each and every decision i think to give us the strength to move towards the things that we know he has to. yeah i think it's, it's really easy for for us particularly you know in times when life is tough or we feel like we're um, really experiencing, um, you know, clouds of darkness for whatever reason it might be, um, to 
to feel overwhelmed mm-hmm. by the by the notion of prayer, it means to actually connect with God, and um, that's you know something that I've experienced at various kind of times and seasons. Um, and I think one of the things that's often a comfort to me is remembering, I suppose, the pure essence of prayer is is communication and connection, mm-hmm. and um, and I suppose that's the uniqueness of of our Christian faith is that. Yes, God is holy and awesome and all powerful, um, but He's also deeply personal and connected mm. and, and intimate. Mm. Um, and um, and I suppose you know, as you've been been looking through the Lord's Prayer, I think remembering that um, it doesn't have to be um, special words or mm. you know, certainly not magic words, and it doesn't mm. have to be complicated. God knows yeah. what's on our heart; He knows the things that are troubling us. Mm. Uh, what he wants and what we need is is connection with him mm. and uh, and yeah just those those simple words of jesus in the lord's prayer um i yeah are often can can be and have been for me at those times when i found it difficult to connect with god like finding a way of just connecting through those simple words again and just remembering what the heart of god is and um uh and yeah connecting with him through that really great awesome well thank you so much for